Hey, good morning, friends. It's Joe. Welcome to my scripture reflection for Tuesday, February the 6th. Hope you're doing well on this Tuesday morning and you have started your day off with something energizing, maybe something spiritual. And they could certainly go together. Something spiritual, whether it's a prayer book that you read in the morning or a prayer you might say or some just quiet meditation time that could really be energizing for the rest of your day so something to think about especially in these winter months when we need something to energize us but our spiritual life should always be a positive thing and something that we take very seriously in a good way with that in mind I will ask you to quiet your minds and hearts as we prepare to hear today's gospel, which is from St. Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. When the Pharisees went with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed in the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat, instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain they do worship me teaching as doctrines, human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He went on to say how well you have set aside the commandment of God in order to uphold your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and whoever curses father and mother shall die. Yet you say, if someone says to father or mother, any support you might have from me is korban, meaning dedicated to God. You allow him to do nothing more for his father or mother. You nullify the word of God in favor of your tradition that you have handed on, and you do many such things. I find it interesting and fascinating when Jesus scolds the Pharisees and the scribes, and he sets them straight on what is really the gospel message and what is the made up gospel message, if you will, or something that they will hold on to that is not in concert with his teaching, which is all about compassion and commitment to God. So it rings back, doesn't it, to what goes on in the present day. And sometimes we have people who will oppose bishops, those who head up the church, those Pharisees and scribes of today. And I think it brings up an interesting point, or several interesting points, actually. And Jesus certainly lends his very powerful words to these points. First and foremost, these people are not God. They are humans. They're not going to be perfect. To think they are perfect is being mistaken to yourself, absolutely to yourself, first and foremost. Follow what you know is in your heart don't dismiss what they say, but take it in context. They're human. I've met many bishops and cardinals over my years. I have some very good thoughts about many of them. Some of them I do question, and I won't get into that now. But the reality is, as I used to hear from my martial arts instructor from years ago, and from the one I work with now in Kung Fu, they are guides. They become guides and they are not gods. They're guides, but not gods. And how realistic is this? It is very realistic. They're there to guide you, but you are responsible for your own spiritual life, your own spiritual health. You know what is right and wrong. You can read the same gospel that they do and you can interpret it in your life as what it is calling you to do. Absolutely, they are there for us to assist us. They are there for us to give guidance to us. But truth be told, in some situations, the way some denominations are set up, they are more pronounced as gods than guides. And I always felt 
and I will say it now, honestly and openly, that that is a mistake for our future spiritual life. Many of them have so much to offer. Listen to that. Mix it in with what is important for your spiritual life and what you know you need to do. Guides, not gods. Let's consider that today and always with due respect and due compassion and due commitment to God first and foremost. Well, my friends, that's my message for you today. As always, I hope it was helpful. I hope you can take it into your day and into your week. I always welcome your comments and your thoughts, and I always appreciate you being here with me. Let's take a moment or two of silent reflection, and then I'll end with a prayer. Most loving God and Savior, we thank you for all of those individuals who you have placed into your churches, into your religions, into your denominations of Christianity. We thank you for the example that they can set. And then we ask you for the discernment that we need to combine that with our own spiritual needs, our own spiritual life, and what we know is right and wrong, and what we should do to continue a journey of compassion on this earth. My friends, I wish you all a wonderful Tuesday, and I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Take care, everyone.